Today's topic is on squares. So on the front, we should know this is a picture of a square. Out of all the figures, square, you know, I would want, I would probably assume that you know the most about. You know, we didn't know as much about a rhombus <clears throat> the other day, but a square is one usually we know something about, know something more about, I should say. So tell me something I know about a square. Okay, so all four sides are congruent. You can put tick marks to show that. Okay, so I got right angles in the corners. Okay, um, out of curiosity, um, are opposite sides parallel in a square? Yep. yep. So like the top is parallel to the bottom. Got the arrows there. Uh, the left side is parallel to the right side. I got arrows on those. Okay, so actually pretty good. That's what we, those are the basics of a square. Now on the inside, we'll talk about the diagonals again. Um, but on the outside, that's pretty good for the basis of a square. The squares, in my opinion, are probably the easiest ones to deal with. There's not as much variety that you can have in a square. And we're going to get into why in just a minute here. Okay, everybody ready for the inside? Okay, so let's list out the properties. Okay, so first property I'm going to put down is that opposite sides are parallel because that's something we added. We put the arrows, right? Is a square a parallelogram? This is my question. Yes, because yes, opposite sides are parallel in a parallelogram. They're also true in a square. So a square is like a special parallelogram to be more specific, okay? Um, we said that all four sides are congruent. Remember, we had tick marks to show that all four of them were congruent. Um, we said that all angles are what? Right angles? And we know right angles are 90 degrees. So those are the basics before we draw on the diagonals. So again, opposite sides are parallel. All four sides are the same length and all angles are right angles, okay? So what I want you to do next, um, before we keep going with our properties, is on your second half, the one that's taped or glued down, let's draw in the two diagonals. You can either freehand it or draw it with the ruler, whichever you prefer. I'm gonna draw mine with the ruler so it's accurate. But again, it's up to you. Again, like I continue to say, this notebook is not for a grade. It's to help you out. I let you use it on the last test, remember. So again, it's beneficial to you, I would assume, to have it. Okay, so if we look at our two diagonals, the rest of the properties I'm going to write down are about the diagonals. Um, do they bisect each other, do you think? Yep. So I'm going to write down... The diagonals, they spell correctly, bisect each other. Okay, diagonals bisect each other. That's true about a parallelogram, so it's true for a square. I'm going to come back to that in just a moment. Are the diagonals congruent? Do they look like the same length? Yes. Yep. So I'm going to put the diagonals are congruent. So if they bisect each other and they're congruent, we know that all four of these segments are going to be the same length. One, two, three, four. If they're congruent and they bisect each other, again, all four of these are congruent. Okay. Anything else about the diagonals that you notice? What kind of angles do I have in the middle, you think? If I turn it sideways. Right, right angles. So if they form right angles... The diagonals are perpendicular. So again, perpendicular, that's that upside down capital T. That means they form right angles. So the way I mark that in the picture, and I'll come back to these properties in case I'm going too fast for you, 
The way I mark it in the picture is I put those right angle boxes in the middle. That means they're perpendicular. Perpendicular lines form right angles. Okay, now there is one more thing we're gonna, actually two more things we're gonna write down. But one more is a property. So again, opposite sides are parallel, all four sides are congruent, all angles are right angles or 90 degrees. The diagonals bisect each other and are congruent and they are also perpendicular to each other. My last property that I'm gonna add, what do you think happens in these corners? We said that's a 90 degree angle. What do you think the diagonal does to the 90 over here? Okay, so what's half of 90? 45, okay, so these are gonna be 45 degrees here, 45 degrees there, 45 degrees here, 45 degrees there. You see what I'm saying, there's not as much variety you can have. All these angles, if you look at the picture, every angle in this picture is either 45 or 90 degrees, one of the two. They're either 90 or 45. You don't have like 30 degree angles in a square. You don't have 46 degree angles in a square. They're either 45 or 90 everywhere in the square. That's what I kept meaning by less variety. So going back to my properties, what happens there is that each diagonal bisects two angles. That's where the 45 degrees comes from. Because if you split 90 in half, half of 90 is 45. So again, each diagonal is gonna bisect two angles. Now, on a side note, remember I said there was something else I wanna add here. A square, I didn't mention this in the beginning, but a square is what you get when you merge a rhombus and a rectangle in a one, into one. So a square is a rectangle and a rhombus. It's like the two of them merged into one. Because if you think about it, you know, a rectangle has the four right angles and the rhombus has the four congruent sides. So it's like the two of them together, when you put them together, they make a square. So a square on a side note is a rectangle and a rhombus put together. It's the two merged into one. It gives you a square. Okay, so what I want to do next, we're just going to do one example below. Um, we're going to draw our own picture and then find everything missing like we have before on other pictures. I don't have any today for finding X um, just because, like I said, there's not as much variety in a square. Okay, is anybody still writing any of this down? Okay, so below, let's draw a picture of a square. So let's see here, you can make it as big or as small as you like. Remember it's your notebook. If you make it super tiny though, sometimes it's hard to read. So I drew a picture of a square. Um, I'm gonna draw in the two diagonals so you can either draw them free-handed or use a ruler, whichever you prefer. And let's start in a moment here with the bottom side to be 10 and this piece of the diagonal to be four. And we can find everything about our square just knowing that. Okay, well, hold on one second though. You're right, but hold on, just in case somebody's drawing it. Okay, can I start? Okay, so like Ashton said, if this bottom is 10, the other three sides, they're all 10, because in a square, all the sides are the same length. Okay, let's deal with the diagonals then. If this piece is four, what are the other three pieces? Four. Okay, uh, what kind of angles do I have in the middle here? 90. Okay, and then what are all these acute angles in the pieces in the corner? 45. 45. 
Now, since I know some of you struggle when we name it with letters, let me just ask you a couple questions um, for your own benefit. So if this is A, B, C, D, and we're gonna do E, not very creative. Okay, we filled everything out in about our picture, but let's just answer a couple questions to make sure we know what we're doing. So if I asked you to find BD, what would you tell me BD is? Eight. Eight, right? Four plus four gives me eight. Everybody good with that? What if I asked you how long AD was? What would you tell me? Ten. Okay, what if I ask you to find angle AEB? Remember the key is, what's the middle letter? E. So A, E, B would be this one here. How many degrees is it? 90. And let's do one more. What if I do angle E, D, C? So if I do E, D, C, what's the middle letter? D. So if I look at it, E, D, C. It's this one here. How big is that? 45. Okay. Any questions?